Patrick Mahaney. I'm uh, Premier Pacific Vineyards Director of Vineyard Estate uh, Marketing. Um, we are at our Gaps Crown Vineyard, which is in the Sonoma Coast AVA. Um, we are, uh, as we speak, um, a, on the western foothills of Sonoma Mountain. So the defining feature of this area of Sonoma County and this vineyard in particular, our Gaps Crown Vineyard, is the Petaluma Wind Gap, which is uh, an opening to the uh, Pacific Ocean and from this site where we're standing it's 17.3 miles to the Pacific Ocean and <clears throat> the marine layer has uh, direct access almost like a wind tunnel to come pouring through here um, during the summer months and that's what keeps this area very cool and makes it really ideal for uh, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay and um, as, as you can see um, there you can see these hills uh, behind me, which are a, a coastal ridge, which blocks the fog from coming in. But where I'm pointing now, <coughs> down that direction, you can see that little bit of a, of a break in the hills. And straight on out that way, as I said earlier, 17.3 miles is where the Pacific Ocean is. And so that fog layer during the summer can just roll right on through here. And the heat summation in this area is um, remarkably low. Um, you would uh, expect it to be um, in Burgundy or somewhere over in the extreme Sonoma coast or in some of the real cold spots down the Santa Rita Hills um, have the same sort of uh, heat summation here. Yeah, the Petaluma Gap is an emerging area. Um, uh, there's a number of growers here um, and the wineries are starting to really see the benefits of this cool area. So here at our Gaps Crown Vineyard, we have a, a wide selection of clones. We've got um, the Heritage clones. We do have a few blocks of Swan. Uh, Dijon clones, we have um, 115. We have um, some 667, uh, the 777, and a substantial amount of 828, which is a, a relatively new clone that we're pretty excited about. And a lot of the winemakers here that we have 828 and uh, get very interested in wanting to try some of that because not too many of them have had experience with it yet. Uh, the soil types here are outstanding for uh, viticultural purposes. It's a characterized as a Goulding clay loam series with a high percentage of rock. Um, so it's very well drained, which of course is, is very significant uh, for high quality wine growing. The Goulding clay loam is uh, is, is more loam than clay, but it does have a nice uh, amount, of, a little bit of clay in there, which is nice because it helps to retain a little bit of moisture to help the vines later in the season. Uh, but again, the rock content is really the predominant uh, characteristic of this soil, and uh, is, which is why it's so well drained. Um, it also allows um, uh, the vine roots to penetrate pretty deeply, um, as far as we're aware from the extensive soil. Um, pits that we've done here. There are no impermeable layers, so I think over time as these vines mature, we potentially are going to have vine roots that are going down, um, you know, very deep into the soil. You know, potentially, um, I'm speculating now, but I think that there's no reason that when these vines are fully mature, which these ones are, 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 uh, are approaching what we would call um, full maturity, which is about sixth leaf, that uh, we wouldn't uh, see, we probably are going to see vine roots that are going as, as deep as, uh, you know, 10 to 15 feet easily, I would expect. Depth of vine root is important because it, um, it, it the vine is, is, if you think of the volume soil as it's going down, um, you've got, of course, the surface, but then in the deeper you go, the more volume you have. The roots are searching and exploring and finding um, <clears throat> more um, you know, more parts of the, of the soil volume to access. Um, it helps stabilize them, uh, especially in years when you don't have uh, very much, um, very much uh, rain. The, um, uh, the vines are getting down, the roots are getting down deep to where they can um, access uh, moisture. And uh, there's also um, more mineral content and other types of things down there that can add to the complexity of the fruit and therefore the wine uh, that comes from the fruit. Um, it's, you know, I don't know that it's technically all that well understood, but it's generally um, accepted through, you know, at least with the, the French, of course, and even in California now that we're getting more and more decades under our belts, that um, uh, 
deep vine root penetration has a, a number of advantages um, in terms of uh, flavor profile of wine, but also in terms of the sustainability of the, and just the general overall health and we could say reliability of the vines. And um, um, it's good for the longevity of the vineyard as well, which is obviously important because it's nice to have old vines, but it doesn't do much good to have old vines that aren't uh, productive and healthful. Yeah, as far as our planting density, we have two different densities here. Uh, the one that we're looking at now um, is uh, 1,361 vines per acre. So you can see um, that the, the, the tractor row, as we call it, is relatively wide um, with about a four foot distance in between the vines and about eight foot in the tractor row. As we move on up the hill, uh, we have a higher density planting. Um, almost 2,200 vines per acre with uh, one meter uh, between vines or about three and a quarter feet and about one meter six um, in the tractor row which is about uh, five and a half to five and three quarter feet. We're excited about this vineyard because um, Pinot Noir does its best when it uh, has a very cool uh, ripening season with not only in terms of heat summation but also that the any time during the growing, growing season the maximum daily temperature not exceeding about 90 to 95 degrees or have as few of those kinds of days as possible but generally speaking the peak temperatures here are 10 to 15 degrees lower than what you would see um, further up the Sonoma Valley and certainly um, that same 10 to 15 degrees cooler than what you'd see the maximum temperatures in Napa Valley at the same time. Yeah, in terms of our farming practices, we um, farm everything uh, sustainably and in California we farm everything uh, according to the California Code of Sustainable Wine Growing Practices and um, are, are very much uh, feel a responsibility to be stewards of the land um, with these properties and would like to see them uh, go into the next generation in uh, at least as good and hopefully even better condition than they were when um, we began working with them.